We were dead men walking, lost to the stars with no hope of salvation, until the humans came. Corvus clenched his teeth as the acrid smoke from his crashed ship stung his eyes and choked his lungs. The unforgiving desert of Terminus Prime stretched out before him, an endless sea of rust-colored dunes offering no quarter to him or his doomed band of Zindi rebels. They had risked everything to escape the ruthless clutches of the Gorn Empire, but now, stranded on this barren hellscape of a planet with their ships shattered to pieces around them, Corvus feared their desperate gambit had only bought them a crueler death. As the twin suns beat down mercilessly on the charred remains of their vessel, Corvus heard shouts of alarm rise from the other survivors. He spun to see a gleaming silver shape cresting a nearby dune, another ship seemingly human in design. Corvus had heard the stories of the humans, of course. Everyone in the galaxy had. They were a young species, brash and unpredictable, hailing from the distant soul system. Corvus had always dismissed the tales of their audacity and refusal to back down from a fight as mere exaggerations. But now, watching the human explorers emerge from their own wrecked vessel and stride purposefully towards the Zindi crash site, he felt a flicker of something he had not experienced in a long time. Hope. The humans drew closer, their strange, pale faces inscrutable behind tinted visors. Corvus heard the click of weapons being armed behind him as his fellow rebels tensed, preparing for a confrontation. But the human in the lead, a tall man with a shock of auburn hair, simply raised a hand in greeting and called out in passable Zindi, We come in peace! Corvus hesitated, torn between his instinct to trust these strangers and the grim certainty that doing so would surely spell the rebels' doom. But then the human commander removed his helmet, revealing a face lined with scars and weathered by the depths of space. Looking into the man's eyes, Corvus recognized a kindred spirit, someone used to staring death in the face and spitting in its eye. Lowering his weapon slowly, Corvus stepped forward to meet the leader of the humans, the last desperate hope for his people's survival. The future of both their races now hung in the balance beneath the uncaring stars of Terminus Prime. Corvus could only pray that the legendary resolve of these humans would be enough to save them all. As the human commander introduced himself as Terry Warren, Corvus felt a flicker of surprise at the man's fluent Zindi. He hesitated a moment longer, then slowly lowered his plasma rifle and stepped forward. I am Corvus, leader of this band of rebels. We flee the tyranny of the Gorn Empire, but I fear we have only traded one cruel fate for another. Terry's eyes flashed with understanding. I know well the oppression of empire. My people spent centuries under the yoke of our own despots before we broke free. Now we seek to forge alliances with other free races. He gestured to the dunes around them. But it seems fate has dealt us a harsh hand. We are stranded here, same as you, with little hope of rescue. Corvus clenched his fists, the bitter taste of defeat rising in his throat. To have come so far only to perish on this scorched rock. But Terry was speaking again, his voice ringing with persistence. I propose an alliance between our people. If we combine our resources and skills, we stand a far better chance of surviving this ordeal. Corvus looked at the humans arrayed behind Terry, noting the glint of keen intelligence in their eyes, the capable set of their stances. Much as it galled him to admit it, the humans spoke wisdom. Alone, the Zindi rebels were doomed, but with the aid of these humans and their technology. Very well, Corvus said at last. We accept your alliance. He extended his hand human style, and Terry clasped it firmly. As the two groups set about establishing a camp amid the wreckage of their ships, Corvus watched the humans work with growing respect. They were ingenious and resourceful, adapting to the harsh conditions of Terminus Prime with admirable tenacity. He noticed Terry's second, a wiry man named Max Donovan, deep in conversation with Lyra, the rebel's chief technician. The two had their heads bent over a tangle of salvaged equipment, working in seamless tandem to repair a portable generator. Corvus felt a spark of hope at the sight. If humans and Zindi could cooperate thus, perhaps there was a chance for them after all. But the trials of Terminus Prime soon began to take their toll. The blistering heat of the days and the bone-numbing cold of the nights wore on human and Zindi alike. Meager rations stretched thinner each day, and sickness crept through the camp like a malevolent specter. 
Zara, the rebel's medic, tended the ill as best she could, but her supplies dwindled rapidly. Corvus watched helplessly as his people shivered and sweat, gripped by fever. One evening, Terry approached him, his face grave. We must retrieve the medical technology from our ship's wreckage. Without it, the sick will not survive. Corvus nodded grimly. I will go with you. At Terry's questioning glance, he added, You risked much in forging this alliance. It is only fitting I share in the danger. As they set out across the dunes, Terminus Prime's baleful sons painting the sands a bloody crimson, Corvus felt an unfamiliar sensation stir in his chest. It took him a moment to place it. Respect, perhaps even the seeds of friendship, for the indomitable human at his side. Little did he know that high above, a Gorn Scout drone drifted in silent orbit, its sensors fixed on the telltale heat signatures of the wreckage below. It beamed its findings across the void to the Gorn flagship, where a strike force was already being mustered. The rebels' respite on Terminus Prime was drawing to a close, and the fury of the Gorn Empire descended upon them with all the inexorable force of a gathering storm. The twin sons of Terminus Prime had barely crested the horizon when Terry and Corvus set out across the endless sea of rust-colored dunes. Their mission was clear, reach the wreckage of the UNSS Magellan and retrieve the medical supplies that could save their dying comrades. Terry's boots sank into the shifting sands with each step, the heat already building despite the early hour. He glanced at Corvus, noting the Zindi's tense posture. How are you holding up? Corvus's mandibles clicked softly. I've survived worse, though I admit your earth deserts put ours to shame. As they trudged onward, the conversation flowed more freely. Terry found himself opening up about his childhood in the slums of New Detroit, fighting his way out of poverty and into the stars. Corvus listened intently, then shared his own tale of witnessing the Gorn Empire's brutal subjugation of his homeworld. We will free them, Terry said, his voice low and fierce. Your people and mine, working together. Corvus nodded, a newfound respect gleaming in his compound eyes. The day wore on, bringing scouring winds that pelted them with stinging sand. They huddled behind a jagged outcropping, shielding their faces. Some rescue mission, Terry muttered, spitting grit from his mouth. Corvus's laughter was a harsh clicking sound. Perhaps we should have brought the Magellan to us instead. When the storm passed, they pressed on. The wreckage of the Magellan loomed before them, a twisted monument of metal half buried in the dunes. They clambered over scorched bulkheads and shattered viewports, searching. Here, Corvus called, lifting a battered medkit from beneath a fallen beam. Terry grinned, hefting a portable stasis unit. This should keep Zara busy for a while. As they gathered the precious supplies, a crackling voice erupted from Terry's communicator. Airy! Gorn! Attack! Hurry! The transmission cut off abruptly. Terry and Corvus locked eyes, a moment of shared dread passing between them. We have to move, Corvus growled, already sprinting back the way they'd come. They ran, stumbling through the treacherous terrain, medical gear clutched tight. Every second stretched into eternity as they imagined the horrors unfolding back at camp. Rounding a towering dune, they skidded to a halt. In the distance, ominous shapes descended from the sky. Gorn dropships filled with weapons. Terry's grip tightened on the stasis unit. Looks like we brought more than medical supplies to this fight. Corvus nodded grimly. Let's hope it's enough. They plunged onward racing against time and the encroaching Gorn forces. The fate of both their peoples hung in the balance, with only sand and sky bearing witness to their desperate flight across the unforgiving wastes of Terminus Prime. The communicator crackled to life, Max's panicked voice cutting through the static. Terry! Gorn! Attack! Hurry! Terry and Corvus exchanged a grim look. Their salvage mission was over. We have to move, Corvus growled, already sprinting back the way they'd come. They ran, stumbling through the treacherous terrain, medical gear clutched tight. Every footfall kicked up plumes of rust-colored sand, their lungs burning from exertion in the acrid air. As they crested a towering dune, the horrifying sight before them brought them skidding to a halt. 
Gorn dropships descended from the sky like ravenous predators, disgorging waves of heavily armed troops. Terry's grip tightened on the stasis unit. Looks like we brought more than medical supplies to this fight. Corvus nodded grimly. Let's hope it's enough. They plunged onward, racing against time and the encroaching Gorn forces. The camp materialized in the distance, a haphazard collection of makeshift structures and salvaged ship parts. Even from afar, they could see the chaos unfolding. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as the defenders mounted a desperate resistance. Zayden's voice rang out over the din, directing the placement of barricades and coordinating return fire. The acrid smell of ozone and burning metal assaulted their nostrils as they drew closer. Terry's tactician's mind raced, analyzing the battlefield. We need to draw them away, he shouted to Corvus over the cacophony of battle. There are canyons to the east. If we can lure them in... Corvus's mandibles clicked in understanding. A trap. They skirted the edge of the firefight, gathering Zayden and a handful of able-bodied fighters. Terry quickly outlined his plan, and soon they were on the move, launching hit-and-run attacks to draw the Gorn troops away from the main camp. The canyons loomed before them, a maze of towering rock formations. Terry had spent the previous day exploring these very passages, and now that knowledge would prove invaluable. As they retreated deeper into the labyrinth, he directed his team to plant salvaged explosives at key choke points. The Gorn pursued relentlessly, their scaled forms weaving through the narrow passages. When the last charge was set, Terry gave the signal. The detonations were deafening, sending shockwaves through the canyon and bringing tons of rock crashing down upon the enemy forces. In the silence that followed, broken only by the distant sounds of battle from the camp, Terry surveyed the carnage. The Gorn ranks had been decimated, but he knew the fight was just the beginning. Back to camp, he ordered. We end this now. They emerged from the canyons to find the situation at the camp hanging by a thread. The defenders were nearly out of ammunition, and the remaining Gorn troops pressed their advantage. With a fierce war cry, Terry led the charge. His team crashed into the Gorn's exposed flank, catching them off guard. The battle devolved into brutal close-quarters combat, every inch of ground contested. Terry found himself back-to-back -back with Corvus, their differences forgotten in the heat of battle. They moved as one, covering each other's blind spots and striking down Gorn soldiers with ruthless efficiency. As the last enemy fell, an eerie quiet settled over the camp. The twin sons of Terminus Prime cast long shadows across the bloodstained sand. Terry's eyes swept over the aftermath, the smoking wreckage, the wounded being tended to by an overworked Zara, the shell-shocked faces of survivors. His gaze fell upon Max, cradling Lyra's limp form. The technician's body was a mass of angry burns, her breathing shallow and labored. I'm sorry, Max choked out. She, she pushed me out of the way. Terry placed a comforting hand on Max's shoulder, words failing him. He looked to Corvus, saw the same mix of sorrow and rage reflected in the Zindi's compound eyes. Corvus's voice was low and filled with steel. This cannot stand. The Gorn Empire must pay for what they've done here. Terry nodded, his eyes hardened in tenacity. Agreed. But first, we need to tend to our wounded and fortify our position. This is far from finished. As the survivors began the grim task of rebuilding, Terry's mind was already racing with plans. The Gorn would be back, and next time, they would be ready. The battle for Terminus Prime had only just begun. The acrid stench of plasma burns and spilled blood hung thick in the air as Terry surveyed the aftermath of the battle. Broken bodies littered the ground, both Gorn and Ally alike. The twin sons of Terminus Prime cast long shadows across the carnage, a grim reminder of the price paid for their survival. Corvus approached, his carapace scored with fresh battle scars. We need to talk, he said, his mandibles clicking with urgency. Gather the others. Terry nodded, calling over Max, Zayden, and the remaining rebel leaders. They huddled in the wreckage of a downed Gorn dropship, its twisted metal providing a modicum of shelter from the harsh elements. Corvus's compound eyes swept over the assembled group. We cannot win this war through attrition, he began, his voice low and intense. The Gorn will keep sending forces until we're crushed. 
Our only hope is to strike at the heart of their empire. Terry's brow furrowed. What do you propose? We sabotage their central command nexus, Corvus replied, pulling up a holographic schematic. Sever the chain of command between their leadership and military forces. Skepticism flickered across Terry's face, but as Corvus outlined his plan, a spark of hope ignited in his chest. It was audacious, perhaps even suicidal, but it just might work. Zara, her hand still stained with the blood of those she'd treated, spoke up. I might have a solution, she said, her voice hoarse from exhaustion. A virus designed to infiltrate and disrupt their command network, but it would require a physical uplink to bypass their cyber defenses. Terry's tactical mind raced, analyzing angles and possibilities. The orbital command station, he said, realization dawning. It's our only shot. The next hours were a flurry of activity. Intelligence from Zindi spies was poured over. Disguises and falsified codes were procured. An elite strike team was assembled, a mix of human and rebel operatives led by Terry and Corvus themselves. They commandeered a battered freighter, its hold filled with salvaged Gorn tech and their own hidden arsenal. As the ship lifted off from Terminus Prime's scorched surface, Terry felt the weight of their mission settle on his shoulders. The fate of entire worlds hung in the balance. The journey to the heart of Gorn territory was fraught with tension. Each passing patrol ship sent pulses of adrenaline through the crew. When they finally approached the cargo docks of the massive orbital station, Terry's knuckles were white on the control yoke. A harsh voice crackled over the comm. Freighter Zeta-9, transmit authorization codes and prepare for inspection. Terry exchanged a tense glance with Corvus as he inputted the stolen codes. Seconds stretched into eternity as they waited for a response. Codes verified. Proceed to docking bay 7. A collective exhale rippled through the strike team. They had passed the first hurdle, but the true test was yet to come. As they disembarked, blending in with the bustle of the station's supply depot, Terry activated his subdermal communicator. Lyra, do you read? Loud and clear, came the technician's voice, strained but determined. I'm patched into the station systems, ready when you are. Terry nodded to Corvus, and the team split into two groups. Max and Zayden, guided by Lyra's remote assistance, set off in search of a hardwire uplink terminal. Meanwhile, Terry and Corvus led the others towards the upper command decks, ready to create a distraction. The labyrinthine corridors of the station stretched before them a maze of potential death and discovery. With each step deeper into enemy territory, the weight of their mission pressed down upon them. The virus was their lifeline, their one chance to turn the tide of this war. As alarms began to blare and the sounds of plasma fire echoed through the station, Terry knew their window of opportunity was rapidly closing. The fate of the galactic realm now rested on a knife's edge, with no guarantee of success or survival. Survival or the fate of the galactic realm. The virus upload completed with a soft chime, barely audible over the chaos erupting around them. Terry's eyes met Corvus's, a moment of shared relief amid the madness. It's done, Terry breathed, his voice rough with exertion. Let's move! They sprinted through the corridors of the Gorn command station, alarms blaring and emergency lights bathing everything in an eerie red glow. Plasma bolts sizzled past, leaving scorch marks on the metal walls. As they fought their way back to the commandeered freighter, the effects of their sabotage became evident. Gorn troops stumbled in confusion, their coordinated defense crumbling as the virus tore through their command network. The ship lifted off amid a hail of disorganized fire, streaking away from the station and into the vast expanse of space. Terry allowed himself a moment to breathe as the adrenaline began to ebb. We did it, Zayden said, his voice filled with a mixture of disbelief and elation. Corvus nodded, his compound eyes gleaming. This is only the beginning. In the days that followed, reports flooded in from across Gorn-controlled space. The virus had spread like wildfire, crippling the Empire's ability to coordinate its forces. Uprisings erupted on a dozen worlds, long-oppressed species seizing the opportunity to strike back against their Gorn overlords. The Alliance's base on Terminus Prime became a hub of frantic activity. Terry found himself poring over star charts and tactical readouts, coordinating with rebel cells across the sector. Another request for assistance, 
Lyra announced, her burns still visible but healing. Zindi freedom fighters on Ethan the Force are facing heavy resistance. Terry rubbed his temples, feeling the weight of countless lives hanging in the balance. We can't be everywhere at once, he muttered. Corvus's mandibles clicked in agreement. No, but we can choose our targets wisely. We must strike at the Empire's critical infrastructure while they're reeling. A plan began to take shape. Terry assembled strike teams, mixing seasoned human operatives with alien rebels to create versatile, unpredictable units. Zayden, once a hothead, now stood tall as he prepared to lead a raid on a major Gorn munitions depot. Remember, Terry briefed the assault team, speed and surprise are our allies. Get in, plant the charges, and get out. We don't have the numbers for a prolonged engagement. As Zayden's team departed, Terry turned his attention to another pressing matter. Intelligence suggested the Gorn were developing new AI weaponry, a potential game-changer if left unchecked. Lyra, he called, you're with me on this one. We're going to infiltrate their research station and acquire that data. The technician nodded, dedication etched on her face. I've got some new toys that might help us bypass their security. As they prepared for their mission, reports trickled in of the Alliance's early successes. Cindy guerrillas had liberated two minor colonies, while a daring raid led by Max had captured a Gorn communications array. Yet amid the victories, a shadow loomed. Reports spoke of a Gorn commander named Dravis, whose brutal tactics were slowing the rebellion's advance in key sectors. Terry studied the intelligence reports, a cold feeling settling in his gut. This Dravis is going to be a problem, he muttered. Corvus nodded grimly. Then we'll deal with him when the time comes. For now, we focus on our objectives. As Terry boarded the stealth shuttle bound for the Gorn research station, he couldn't shake the feeling that their real challenges were only beginning. The Empire was wounded, but far from defeated. The coming battles would test them all in ways they couldn't yet imagine. The shuttle's engines hummed to life, carrying them into the void. Ahead lay danger, uncertainty, and the faint glimmer of hope for a free galaxy. The shuttle's stealth systems hummed as Terry and Lyra approached the Gorn research station. Their mission to acquire data on the Empire's new AI weaponry felt increasingly urgent with each passing moment. Suddenly, their comms crackled to life. Max's voice came through, strained and breathless. Terry, abort mission! We've got a situation! Terry's stomach dropped. Report! It's Dravis, Max explained. He's unleashed some kind of autonomous hunter-killer drones. They're tearing through our defenses like they're not even there. The shuttle banked hard as Terry redirected their course. We're heading back. Max, give me details. As they raced back to Terminus Prime, the full scope of the devastation became clear. The drones adapted to every countermeasure, learning and evolving at a terrifying pace. Allied territories fell one after another, the mechanized swarm leaving destruction in its wake. Upon landing, Terry found the base in chaos. Zayden stumbled in, his face ashen. We lost three outposts in the last hour alone. These things, they're unstoppable. Terry's mind raced. Conventional tactics wouldn't work against an enemy that adapted this quickly. His eyes fell on a nondescript crate in the corner of the command center, salvaged from the UNS Magellan's wreckage. Lyra, that prototype stealth field generator, can you get it operational? The technician's eyes widened. It's experimental tech, but yes, I think so. Do it, Terry ordered. It's our only shot at masking our energy signatures. As Lyra worked, Max hunched over banks of monitors, his fingers flying across holographic interfaces. I'm analyzing their programming, he muttered. There has to be a weakness. Hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. The stealth field generator came online just as reports filtered in of another drone assault. Terry led a small team to test the cloaking technology, their energy signatures massed as they approached a drone production facility. The gambit worked. They slipped past the facility's defenses undetected, planting charges at key structural points. As they retreated, the facility erupted in a series of explosions, temporarily stemming the tide of mechanized death. But it wasn't enough. The drones kept coming, adapting, evolving. Terry knew they needed a more permanent solution. 
Lyra approached, her cybernetic implants glowing faintly. I have an idea, she said. It's risky, but I think I can upload a virus directly into their mainframes. It won't stop them permanently, but it might buy us time. Terry nodded grimly. Do it. The infiltration was a nerve-wracking affair. Lyra, cloaked by the stealth field, slipped into a drone control hub. For agonizing minutes, there was silence. Then across the sector, reports flooded in of drones suddenly losing cohesion, spinning aimlessly or crashing into each other. In the brief respite, Terry gathered his core team. This is our chance, he said. We need to strike at the source, Dravis. Corvus's mandibles clicked in agreement. A small team, he said. Fast, quiet. We penetrate his command bunker and end this. As they prepared for the assault, a young rebel rushed in. Sir, we've captured a Gorn officer. He's asking to speak with you. Says he has vital information. Terry's eyes narrowed. Bring him in. The Gorn, scales dulled and eyes haunted, spilled everything. Dravis's plans, the full scope of the Empire's genocidal ambitions, and the location of his fortified command center. With this intelligence, Terry finalized the assault plan. He, Corvus, and Max would lead the strike team. Lyra would provide remote support, feeding virus countermeasures into the base's systems. They were about to depart when alarms blared. The drones had adapted again, swarming towards their position. Go! Zayden shouted, already organizing a defensive line. We'll hold them off. End this! Terry nodded, leading his team to the waiting shuttle. As they lifted off, the sky darkened with the approaching swarm. Time was running out. The assault on Dravis's bunker began smoothly, the team penetrating deep into the facility. But as they approached the central chamber, Max's eyes widened in horror. It's a trap, he yelled, fingers flying across his data pad. Someone compromised our insertion point. Hunter-killer drones poured into the corridor from hidden apertures. In the chaos, Max's quick thinking saved them. He rerouted the drone's friend-or-foe protocols, creating a momentary opening for the team to escape. They fought their way deeper into the complex, knowing their window of opportunity was rapidly closing. Finally, they breached Dravis's inner sanctum. The Gorn commander stood waiting, a cruel smile on his reptilian features. You're too late, he hissed. My drones will... His words were cut short as Corvus's plasma rifle discharged, the bolt catching Dravis square in the chest. The Gorn crumpled. His reign of terror ended in an instant. As alarms blared and the facility shook with the impact of converging drones, Max raced to the central console. I'm in, he shouted. Lyra now! Through their comms, they heard Lyra's voice, tense with concentration. Uploading virus countermeasures, rerouting drone protocols, for a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then abruptly, the alarms fell silent. On the monitors, they watched as drones across the sector suddenly went dark, falling from the sky like metal rain. In the aftermath, as they sifted through the data recovered from Dravis's systems, the true horror of the Gorn's plans became clear. The drones were just the beginning. The Empire had been preparing for the wholesale extermination of all who opposed them. Terry looked at Corvus, seeing the same unyielding commitment reflected in the Zindi's compound eyes. We need to take the fight to them, Terry said. One final push to end this once and for all. Corvus nodded. Gorn Prime, he said. The heart of the Empire. As they began to plan for the ultimate assault, Terry knew the hardest battle still lay ahead. But for the first time since this war began, he dared to hope that victory might finally be within reach. Terry's gaze swept across the command center, where holographic displays flickered with real-time updates from across the galaxy. The fall of Dravis and the neutralization of his robotic swarms had shifted the balance of power dramatically. Now the time had come to strike at the very heart of the Gorn Empire. Corvus, Terry called, his voice steady despite the weight of the moment. We have our target. The Zindi's compound eyes glinted with fierce grit. Gorn Prime, he chittered. The lair of Malgaraxis himself. As word spread of the impending assault, a palpable energy surged through the Allied forces. Ships from a dozen liberated worlds converged, their hulls bearing the scars of recent battles. 
Zayden, his face set in grim focus, prepared his team of hardened operatives for the dangerous infiltration mission ahead. Max hunched over banks of computers, his fingers dancing across holographic interfaces. I've found it, he announced, not looking up from his work. A vulnerability in their planetary shielding. If we can exploit it... Lyra nodded, her cybernetic implants pulsing with activity. We'll need a virus more sophisticated than anything we've created before. But it's possible. As the hours ticked by, the massive Allied Armada took shape. Terry stood on the bridge of the flagship, watching as vessels of all shapes and sizes fell into formation. Human cruisers flew alongside angular Zindi warships in the exotic craft of newly freed races. Operation Valiant Retribution is go, Terry announced over the fleet-wide channel. All ships, prepare for jump. The void erupted in a dazzling display of light as hundreds of vessels tore holes in the fabric of space-time. They emerged in high orbit over Gorn Prime, a world of twisting spires and sprawling hive cities. Shields down, Max's voice crackled over the comms. Lyra's virus worked. We have our window. Terry's voice rang out, crisp and clear. All batteries, open fire. Target their defensive emplacements. The sky above Gorn Prime lit up as lances of energy stabbed downward. Ion cannons methodically picked apart the planet's defensive grid, leaving swaths of the capital in darkness. Zayden, you're clear, Terry ordered. Get your team planetside and wreak havoc. As Zayden's stealth dropships pierced the atmosphere, Terry turned his attention to the main assault. Thousands of troop transports streamed from the belly of the Allied fleet carrying a multi-species army unlike any the galaxy had seen before. Terry's own dropship shuddered as it plunged through curtains of anti-aircraft fire. He gripped his weapon tightly, stealing a glance at Corvus and Max. Their eyes met, a wordless exchange conveying volumes. The landing ramp slammed down onto the shattered streets of the Gorn capital. Terry surged forward, plasma bolts sizzling past as his strike team fought their way through knots of desperate defenders. The Imperial Palace, Corvus shouted over the din of battle. It's just ahead. They battled their way across a span of twisted metal. Once a grand sky bridge, now a gauntlet of death. Corvus moved with fluid grace, his reflexes allowing him to dance between volleys of enemy fire. The final push to the Citadel was a blur of close quarters combat. Terry's armor was scored and smoking by the time they breached the inner sanctum. There, amid the opulence of the throne room, stood Malgaraxis himself. The Gorn Overlord towered over them, scales gleaming, eyes filled with hatred. You dare, he hissed, uncoiling a vicious energy whip. Corvus stepped forward, his own weapon humming to life. Your reign ends here, tyrant. What followed was a duel of terrifying intensity. Corvus and Malgaraxis clashed in a whirlwind of strikes, each seeking to land the killing blow. The room shook with the force of their combat, ancient treasures reduced to rubble. A particularly vicious strike sent Corvus sprawling. Malgaraxis loomed over him, whip raised for the final strike. In that moment, Terry acted on pure instinct. He hurled himself forward, tackling the overlord and throwing off his aim. It was the opening Corvus needed. With a fluid motion, he brought his weapon up and unleashed a searing blast of energy. Malgaraxis's scream of rage turned to a gurgle as he collapsed, smoke rising from the charred hole in his chest. Silence fell, broken only by the distant sounds of battle. It's done, Corvus said softly, his mandibles clicking. Terry nodded, tapping his comm unit. This is Commander Star. The Imperial Palace has fallen. Malgaraxis is dead. A roar of triumph erupted over the channel, echoed by the cheers of allied forces across the planet. As word spread, the remaining Gorn military crumbled, their will to fight evaporating. In the days that followed, Delegations from a hundred worlds converged on Gorn Prime. The victory celebration was tempered by the solemnity of the task ahead, forging a new galactic order from the ashes of war. Terry stood on a balcony overlooking the transformed capital, Corvus at his side. The Zindi's voice was thoughtful as he spoke. We've won the war, my friend. Now comes the hard part. Terry nodded, his eyes fixed on the horizon. Building a lasting peace ensuring this never happens again. 
As the sun set on the first day of a new era, both human and Zindi knew that their greatest challenges and their greatest triumphs still lay ahead. As the sun set on the first day of a new era, both human and Zindi knew that their greatest challenges and their greatest triumphs still lay ahead. The fall of Gorn Prime had shattered the Empire's iron grip, but pockets of resistance remained. Terry's comm unit crackled to life. Commander, we've detected multiple unauthorized launches from the southern continent, Max reported, his voice tense. Loyalists, Corvus hissed, mandibles clicking. They won't go quietly. Terry's eyes narrowed. Then we'll have to root them out. Assemble the team. Within hours, Operation Phoenix Dawn was underway. Strike teams fanned out across the galaxy, each led by a veteran of the Gorn War. Lyra's cybernetic enhancements allowed her to sift through vast data streams, pinpointing Gorn hideouts with uncanny precision. Got another one, she announced, her implants pulsing. Abandoned mining outpost in the Rigel system. Zayden, you're up. Zayden's team moved like ghosts through the derelict facility. Plasma rifles flashed in the darkness, cutting down Gorn soldiers before they could raise the alarm. In the command center, they found a high-ranking Imperial officer, scales dulled with age, but eyes still burning with fanaticism. For the Empire, the Gorn roared, lunging for a dead man's switch. Zayden's reflexes, honed by countless battles, proved faster. The Gorn's body hit the floor before his claw could complete its arc. Across the sector, similar scenes played out. Max led a cyber assault on a Gorn communications hub, dismantling their ability to coordinate. Corvus oversaw the methodical dismantling of hidden weapons caches, Zindi engineers working alongside human explosives experts. But the final stronghold proved the most formidable. On a barren moon orbiting a gas giant, Gorn ultra-nationalists had seized control of a fortress jam packed with stolen Imperial weaponry. This ends now, Terry growled, strapping himself into the pilot seat of a stealth dropship. His hand-picked team, a mix of human and alien warriors, checked their gear one final time as they plunged through the moon's thin atmosphere. Anti-aircraft fire lit up the sky, but Terry's piloting skills were unmatched. He wove through the barrage, bringing them down hard on a landing pad jutting from the fortress walls. The battle that followed was brutal and close quarters. Terry's team fought room by room, corridor by corridor, against Gorn soldiers driven to suicidal frenzy by their fanaticism. In the heart of the fortress, Terry came face to face with Warlord Urkath. The Gorn towered over him, cybernetic enhancements gleaming beneath scaled skin. You should not have come here, human, Urkath snarled, activating an energy shield that crackled with awe-inspiring power. Terry's own shield sprang to life, a gift from Zindi engineers. It's over, Urkath. Surrender, and you'll be treated fairly. The Gorn's answer was a bellow of rage as he charged. Terry met him head-on, their energy shields clashing in a shower of sparks. They traded blows amid the wreckage of the command center, each seeking an opening in the other's defenses. A lucky strike sent Terry sprawling, his shield flickering. Urkath loomed over him, mandibles spread in a victorious roar. But the warlord had forgotten one crucial detail. Terry Starr never fought alone. A plasma bolt sizzled past Terry's ear, catching Urkath square in the chest. The Gorn's eyes widened in shock as he toppled backward. Behind him stood Corvus, rifle still smoking. You look like you could use a hand, the Zindi said, offering Terry his own multi-jointed appendage. As the last Gorn stronghold fell, a new chapter began. The interstellar allied Imperium rose from the ashes of war, a beacon of hope for a battered galaxy. On a thousand worlds, the banners of oppression were lowered, replaced by the symbol of unity Corvus had designed. Terry stood on the bridge of the horizon dawn, gazing out at the stars. Behind him, the gleaming spires of the Allied capital world slowly receded. A new frontier beckoned, full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. His comm unit chimed. Corvus's familiar voice filled the bridge. We feared for our lives until the humans came. Your spirit has lit a path of hope for all intelligent life in this galaxy. Terry smiled, feeling the weight of recent years lift from his shoulders. And you showed us the true meaning of alliance, old friend. 
take care of things while we're gone. As the Horizon Dawn engaged its faster-than-light drive, Terry couldn't help but wonder what new adventures and new allies awaited them in the vast, unexplored reaches of space. The Horizon Dawn sliced through the void, its sleek hull gleaming under the light of distant stars. Terry stood on the bridge, his gaze fixed on the endless expanse beyond the viewscreen. The thrill of exploration mingled with a familiar weight in his chest, memories of the war never far from his thoughts. Max's heavy footsteps broke the silence. Commander, he said, his voice rough with fatigue. I've been running diagnostics on the long-range sensors. Everything's operational, but... Terry turned, noting the dark circles under his friend's eyes. What is it, Max? I keep seeing Lyra's face, Max admitted, his cybernetic hand clenching involuntarily. Every time I close my eyes, I'm back in that control hub, watching her. Terry placed a hand on Max's shoulder, feeling the tension beneath his uniform. I know, he said softly. We all carry those moments with us. A muted beep from the communications array drew their attention. Lieutenant Zara, her medic's coat exchanged for a crisp officer's uniform, frowned as she adjusted the controls. Sir, I'm picking up something on an encrypted allied frequency. Terry moved to her station, brow furrowed. Can you clean it up? Zara's fingers danced across the interface, her movements precise. The bridge speakers crackled to life, filling the air with static and fragmented words. Ambushed by unknown hostile force. Warship configuration unlike anything in allied databanks. They've already crippled our... Ang uh the crew froze as a blood-curdling scream tore through the transmission. By the Celestials, what is that monstrosi... Silence fell heavy and oppressive. Terry's mind raced, adrenaline surging through his veins. Max, triangulate that signal. Zara, alert the medical bay. We may have wounded to deal with. The bridge erupted into controlled chaos as the crew sprang into action. Terry gripped the arms of his command chair, muscles tense as the horizon dawn altered course. Sir? Max called out, his voice tight. I've got a fix on the signal's origin. It's coming from an uncharted system just beyond the Imperium's borders. Terry nodded grimly. Take us in, full speed, but keep our shields up and weapons hot. Whatever took out that allied ship could still be out there. As the horizon dawn surged forward, Terry found his gaze drawn to the empty seat beside him. He could almost hear Corvus's voice, filled with both wisdom and worry. The infinite cosmos yet awaits your curiosity and courage. The stars blurred into streaks of light as the ship entered faster than light travel. Terry steeled himself for what lay ahead, knowing that the relative peace they'd fought so hard to achieve might already be shattered. Dropping out of FTL in three, two, one, Max announced. The view screen flared as the horizon dawn tore back into normal space. What greeted them sent a chill down Terry's spine. Debris floated in a vast cloud before them, the unmistakable remnants of an allied frigate. But interspersed among the twisted metal were fragments of something else. Hull plates of an alien design, pulsing with an eerie, otherworldly energy. Life signs? Terry asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Zara shook her head, her face pale. None detected, sir, but our sensors are having trouble penetrating some of the larger pieces of wreckage. Terry stood, his decision made. Prep a shuttle. Max, you're with me. Zara, you have the con. Keep the ship at yellow alert and be ready to extract us at a moment's notice. As Terry and Max made their way to the shuttle bay, the commander caught a glimpse of his reflection in a polished bulkhead. The face that looked back at him was older, harder than the one that had first taken up arms against the Gorn Empire, but the eyes still burned with the same willpower. Whatever threat lurked in the darkness ahead, humanity would face it head on. The sacrifices of Lyra, Corvus, and countless others would not be in vain. The shuttle's engines thrummed to life as Terry and Max strapped themselves in. As the bay doors slid open, revealing the star-studded abyss, Terry couldn't shake the feeling that they were about to cross a threshold into a new and dangerous chapter of galactic history. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.